Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's hey! a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. All right, we're going to go through the actual hearing, uh, play the audio from the hearing. I think Adam Schiff did the best job of questioning uh, everybody else, sort of fumfered around, stammered around. We needed, uh, you know, Barry Burke. Uh, but uh, this uh, this this hearing today wasn't very, very, very long. It was about three hours. I'm sure most of you saw it. But we'll just break it down and go through it with you, uh, with us today to refresh, right? Because what has happened here is so violative of uh, having free and fair elections in this country. It was an abuse of power and there was a cover up again. And you know what you need to remember about July 25th, that date? The day before July 24th was the day that Mueller testified. And so Donald Trump felt like he didn't lay a glove on me. I'm going to do it again. I mean, it's just, this is so bizarre. This is so crazy. I mean, you know, uh, you, 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 I mean, the whistleblower complaint says that an unidentified White House official tried to cover up the call. You know, that's like Trump trying to hide racism. You can't do it. it just, it can't, but these people need to come forward. But before we get into uh, the actual audio of this, where Adam Schiff is just beyond, he's, he's beyond, be, beyond belief. Like, who was supposed to investigate this? You know, you're in charge of the whole intelligence community. I mean, and you go to the actual subject of the complaint. You go to the guy who's being accused of crime and fraud. You go to the guy who's covering up crime and fraud and you ask him what you should do with a crime and fraud complaint where he is the subject of the. It is so bizarre and yet simple in the uh, deviousness of it. But uh, I just wanted to say that I did not think that we would get one more match day. You know, tomorrow is the end of our first, this was our very first pledge drive for Free Speech TV. And I didn't think we would get another match day, you know, because we had had two and they were both good. And I'll give you the totals when we're all done. Uh, But we got a guy, I I don't know why he's, uh, you know, so nice to us, but Andy in San Diego, thank you so much. He has decided that he will match whatever you do today for Free Speech TV. This is not for us. This is for Free Speech TV. Uh, up to $10,000. I mean, that that's freaking amazing. So if you made like a $150 donation today because you love... Uh, see, I never wear this because I wear headphones. But it's a very good-looking uh, Randy Rhodes cap. So that, you know, I'll autograph that for you for 150 is what I'll do. But that will actually be $300 to free speech tv because andy will match it anything that you do up to ten thousand, he will match today so go for it uh just go to freespeech.org or call them up at 877-378-8669 tomorrow is the last day of the pledge drive and uh, i'm just delighted that we made it through <laughs> i didn't so, you know i mean i just uh i didn't really I had never done it before, so thank you very much for your support in this. All right, let's go through the actual testimony. Here is um, Adam Schiff. I mean, Adam Schiff was amazing. I can play a little clip of Devin Nunes just so you could see the lack of seriousness in that party when it comes to protecting and defending the United States of America and the, the sanctity of our elections. They don't care. All right, so here's Adam Schiff asking, and this is what uh, Gary in Fort Lauderdale was alluding to. He's asking uh, this, this, this Joe McGuire dude who's been on the job for six weeks, you know, why did you go to the White House first? And so the first place you went for advice as to whether you should provide the complaint as the statute requires to Congress was the White House. I am not authorized uh-huh, uh-huh. as the director of national intelligence to provide executive privileged information. I think it is prudent as a member of the executive branch to check to ensure that in fact it does not. I'm just asking about the sequencing here. Did you first go to the White House to determine whether you should provide a complaint to Congress? No, sir, that was not the question. The question was whether or not it has executive privilege, not whether or not I should send it on to Congress. Okay. Is the first party you went to outside of your office to seek advice, counsel, direction, the White House? I have consulted with the White House counsel, and eventually we also consulted 
with the Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel. And my question is, did you go to the White House first? I went to the Office of Legal Counsel for advice. Yes, sir. That, well, I'm asking which you went to first. Did you go to the Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel first, or did you go to the White House first? I went to the office, my, excuse me, my team, my office, went to the Office of Legal Counsel first to, to receive whether or not the matter in the letter and in the complaint might meet the executive privilege. They viewed it and said, we've determined that it appears to be executive privilege. And until executive privilege is determined and cleared, I did not have the authority to be able to send that forward to the committee. I worked with the Office of Legal Counsel for the past several weeks to get resolution on this. It's a very deliberate process. Well, Director, I'm just, I'm still trying to understand the chronology. So huh. you first went to the Office of Legal Counsel and then you went to White House Counsel? We went, excuse me, and then to the, repeat that please, sir. I'm just trying to understand the chronology. You first went to the Office of Legal Counsel and then you went to the White House Counsel? No, 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 sir. No, sir. No, we went to the, we went to the White House first to determine, to ask the Okay, that, that's all I wanted to know was chronology. So you went to the White House first. <laughs> this guy, I, I, he's so above his pay grade. This is so unbelievable that this is the man. This is why we were making fun of it. You know, acting director of DNA. This guy's not been confirmed by the Senate. This guy ha ha self-admitted that he's not up to this task, that he shouldn't have this job. Uh, and, and you know, Dan Coates uh, ran out the door and took Sue Gordon with him uh, literally pulled her out of a meeting having to do with something that the director of national intelligence has under his or her jurisdiction, which is foreign interference in U.S. elections. And this guy, this numbnuts, goes to the White House to say, do you want to claim executive privilege over this? Because you're named as, as uh, you know, somebody who's, uh, you know, engaged in crime and fraud and abuse of power. Uh, do you want to claim executive? That is the dumbest move I've ever heard in my life. And it just shows you that this guy didn't and doesn't know what he's doing. That is dangerous for the United States of America on every level you could possibly imagine. You have a president who's talking about North Korea. You have a president who's talking about bombing Iran. You got a president who's talking about Afghanistan. You got a president who's gonna meet with the Taliban. This is our DNI. This is the guy. This is him. Oh my God. Be frightened, be very, very frightened about that there. Okay, that's number one. Number two, what in the world did he think the White House was gonna say since the White House is the subject of the crime. The law does not say that the DNI should go to the White House. The law says the DNI shall provide to Congress. That's really crazy. The second place you went to was the Justice Department. <clears throat> and you went to that department headed by a man, Bill Barr, who was also implicated in the complaint. And you knew that when you went to the Department of Justice for an opinion, correct? That <laughs> Bill Barr was mentioned in the complaint? What could go wrong? Mr. Chairman, yeah. I went to the Office of Legal Counsel in consultation with the ICIG. He was a part of that to receive whether or not this met the criteria. Yes, but that ICIG vehemently disagreed with the opinion of the Bill Barr Justice Department, did he not? That's Atkinson. He still met, considered it a matter of urgent concern. However, as you know, opinions from Department of Justice, Office of Legal Counsel, are binding on all of us in the executive branch. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think it's appropriate that you go to a department run by someone who's the subject of the complaint? <laughs> to get advice, or who is a subject of the complaint or implicated in the complaint for advice as to whether you should provide that complaint to Congress? Did, did, did that, that conflict of interest concern you? Mr. Chairman, <laughs> when I saw this report and complaint, immediately I knew that this was a serious matter. <laughs> so I went to the people named in the complaint as subjects of the abuse of power and wrongdoing and asked them, what do I do? Yeah, he's a brilliant intelligence operator, this man. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.